family tree. This is the story of my grandfather. You see, when my mom was still a toddler, her mother married a man named John Oliver and like many black men, he worked in the armed service. It's hard to determine what made him nourish his habit of alcohol, which made him an addict. The travesty of alcohol dependency, which led to a tendency for a beast to surface. He would eventually begin to beat, kick, choke, fight, cuss, whip, inflict pain. A young black man, intelligent and handsome, but destined to reclaim the anthems of souls destroyed by those liquid phantoms. He consumed demons and spirits with stickers and labels, liquor, in tinted glass containers, became a stranger to himself. It changed his mentality, became hellish, a drunken zealot without any inhibition. His mission to satisfy his selfish desires. He struggled with his sobriety, even denying that he had a problem. But with off the liquor sober, he was one of the nicest men that you could ever meet. He was kind, generous, considerate. But you see, those times were few and far in between. He developed a routine on Fridays to be gone for a few days, return home early Sundays. And the booze he paid for stayed on his breath. And the bruises he made became sore and stayed on her flesh. As he led his family through the church doors and played the role of the righteous father, Pious, when he really had a dark side of a pirate, a tyrant, I call him a domestic terrorist. All that violence and abuse, sanctioned under the guidelines of legal marriages. My grandma sought counseling. She went down to the local parish and the church father told her like this to simply grin and bear it as if God wanted her to be a punching bag for this man through sickness and health until death do you part. But she stayed strong, knowing something was way wrong and kept praying to God for help because this man couldn't control himself, her mental health and life on the line. And at times when intoxicated, you could see the devil in his eyes. My aunt, uncles and mom would huddle and cry, hearing muffled blows on my grandma's flesh, not knowing if she'd be alive at the time of sunrise. His iniquities then spread to his seeds. You see my aunt and two uncles begin to emulate his deeds. They started out with the drinking and smoking, but two of them didn't let it control them. They conquered the monster, but the addiction was so much stronger. And my uncle Johnny, he named after his father, he took after his father. He sought something to curb his addiction. He started experimenting, injected heroin into his system through his forearm. One shot was all that it took. Hook, line, and sinker. He destined from the womb to be a casualty of this chemical warfare and the family noticed he drastically changed. His parents already gone, they separate way. You see my grandma, she finally got the divorce. John Oliver Singer, he out of Mississippi, he tipsy of course. Little Johnny was fidgeting. He wasn't into as much physical activity as he used to be. And what could it be when the family would ask? Nothing is what he was snapped back, but it became all apparent when he forged his mom's signature to get cash. That he had smack tracks on the other side of his elbow. He got into a rehab and started getting back to the Johnny we used to know. But then them chemicals began to call him back by way of this one fast sister he used to holler at. See, she slipped him a bag of smack. It wasn't cut clean. Set to wreak havoc in his recovering bloodstream, but still he cooked it. He drew it up slow into the syringe. He tied his arm off tight. He pushed that needle through his skin. My poor Uncle Johnny, he chasing that dragon again in that evening. This is what happened to him. You see, he shot up. He dropped to his knees. His muscles seized up. His heart gave up. He never got up. He a byproduct of his father's disease. And by now, under his skin, his blood starts to chill. In sets the rigor mortis. My uncle, he a picture, a ghetto steel portrait titled Overdose in Mom's Kitchen. My grandma, she come home tired from work. Not knowing his condition, not knowing that a worst nightmare has just come to fruition. It's dark inside the home, the light switches on the other side of the room. She feels an emptiness in the womb as she passes a cold stump. She calls out for Johnny, there's no answer. He's not responding. She turns the light on and sees her son's body hunched over with his life gone. And that night, my mom, she felt the same pain so many miles away. About a year later, I joined the family and I'm the first after Johnny. And somehow because of this madness, I know our bodies are oddly connected. John Oliver Singh is still just as reckless. He's still drinking, still changing from a man into a demon. He's still scheming on women. But one evening, it all began to catch up. 
It's payback for all them times and all them lives that he done messed up. And for real, it's hard to feel any remorse or sadness. I still don't know all the details, but a woman who grew tired of his madness, she took him off this planet for good. And should I feel this way truthfully, I don't even know. All I know is that this is a true tale, some of that ghetto non-fiction of what happened to my family and all because of addiction. Addiction, y'all. This is my family tree.